Welcome to Arizona Prep Spotlight, where we cover all things Arizona Prep Sports, from top matchups to exclusive interviews. I'm Norris Thomas, and we're coming to you from Arizona Stadium at the University of Arizona in Tucson, where the 4A, 5A, and 6A championship games went down on Saturday. So let's get right into it, starting with the first contest of the day, the 4A championship game, and the final stepping stone in Saguaro's Drive for Five. Now we get to the biggest showdown of the night, Perry and Chandler in the 6A title game. Though Perry never let Chandler get too far ahead, the Wolves had their balance attack on display en route to their second straight championship. Chandler and Perry went to battle for the bragging rights for the state of Arizona and the city of Chandler with Chandler looking to win back-to-back -back titles. We pick up the action in the first quarter with Perry leading 7-0. When Chandler's Drake Anderson punches it into the end zone, we are tied 7-7. We move to the second quarter and Brock Purdy hits number 83, Connor Boyd, for the TD. Perry now up 14-7. Chandler would answer right back when Jacob Conover hit Jarrett Codwell down the sideline for the score. We are now tied again at 14-14. Then Chandler's Conover showing his cool hand delivers this strike to number 19, Braden Lybrock, and Chandler goes up 21-14 at the half. On to the third quarter, and Chandler is up 27-21. When Conover finds Gunnar Romley for the score, Chandler rolling 34-21. This game was high scoring and action packed. Watch Drake Anderson shake, bake, and make it to the end end zone Chandler up now 42 to 28 Purdy and Perry is pretty good and I mean really good this strike brings the score to 49 42 but Chandler seals the win and back-to-back -back state titles welcome back I'm Norris Thomas we're now a full month into the basketball season believe it or not and the contests on the court are getting better and better let's get to some highlights from the biggest battles of the week Starting with Tuesday, Queen Creek paying a visit to Mesquite, and they're greeted immediately by this Jaden Lee block, his first of three. But Lee was just as impressive on offense with the no-look pass off the dribble for Kingdom Artis' lay-in. Artis also got a lot of attention on offense for Mesquite because he can do this. He spins off his defender into the corner and nails the contested three. Down 13 at the half, Tyler Fulton and Queen Creek lighting a spark with the powerful one-handed jam. But Jaden Lee says, anything you can do, I can do better, as he gets it in transition and slams it through. And then he puts the finishing touches on Mesquite's 68-61 win with the smooth handles here. It's Mesquite's eighth straight. Hello and welcome to another edition of Arizona Prep Spotlight on Fox Sports Arizona. I'm Norris Thomas and with me is Sarah Cassell. You know, it's a great time of the year in the Valley of the Sun as we get into the swing of winter sports championships. You know what, Norris, it is an awesome time of year right now. The wrestling sectionals are underway. This week's soccer concluded its first round and quarterfinals for both boys and girls. And of course, we'll have all of that covered for you coming up. But first, while basketball still has a couple of weeks before they start playoffs, it's the final push as players and coaches alike are gearing up for their chance at a title. You know what, Magic Johnson used to call this winning time. Indeed but it is. What happens when you have a house divided? Corona Del Sol's head coach has two sons that serve as managers for Gilbert High School basketball programs. The Tigers and the Aztecs tipped off against each other early this week, and our Kelsey Perry was there. 2017 Perry graduate Emory Miller accepted a challenge as a fifth grader to help others. Now in its eighth year, the Emory Bear Toss has expanded nationally. We captured the action and learned more about this nonprofit organization at the fourth annual event here at Perry High School recently. It's game night for Perry High School basketball as they host the Chandler Hamilton Huskies. However, tonight is more than just a coming together of two foes on the basketball court. It's about a community joining forces to put smiles on children's faces across the United States. Tonight is the fourth annual Emory Bear Toss and basketball fans lined up to make a difference. Let's meet 2017 Perry graduate Emory Miller. For eight years, Emory has been selling and collecting stuffed teddy bears in an effort to bring hope to sick children like he was as a child. And the results have been amazing. This actually all started um, about eight years ago, um, but it starts way before that. Personally in my life, I was born with a hole in my heart and with severe valve issues, and I wasn't supposed to live past the age of one. Um, I, was, I had four open heart surgeries before the age of seven, and once I was finally healthy enough to give back, I wanted to do that in a big way. So I was at church one afternoon, and they challenged us just to give more for Christmas. Um, and that's really how it started. So as a fifth grader, I wanted to give one teddy bear back to Phoenix Children's Hospital, who had helped me so much growing up. And that one bear turned into over 400 bears um, that year. Now, over the course of our last seven years, we've been able to give, uh, we've been able to donate nearly 25,000 teddy bears to over 11 states, 35 hospitals. Um, and it's, it's just been very, very cool to see it kind of trans transform. With such rapid growth in a short time, there's no doubt that a lot of work behind the scenes goes into making this nonprofit organization a success. 
Volunteers are pleased with how communities have responded and find fulfillment in the mission and purpose of the nationwide events. I started this five years ago, so I've only been five out of the eight years, and, it, and it's so heartwarming to see everybody giving back and how much it's grown and how much the word has spread about it, and it's gone out there. Emory shares his story with supporters all across the country about his cause, but the real proof of support is in the bear toss itself, where whether win or lose on the court, everyone comes away a winner, and all the bears are collected and shipped to their final destination, happiness, as another successful night comes to a close where wishes do come true. They call it the QB Lab, and under the watchful eye of quarterback coach Dan Minucci, some of Arizona's finest high school and now collegiate quarterbacks are being put through the paces as the football offseason is now upon us. The nuances of football's most visible position is a continual process and a skill set that is perfected while in the lab. Some of the names are familiar, and a couple you will get to know over the next couple of seasons, but out here, there are no superstars. They are all equal and use this time to learn from each other while honing their craft. What I try to do is just make sure that their footwork, their mechanics, their understanding of what that coach teaches them during the week, that we have that same basic understanding. Now, the footwork might be a little bit different at that school, so we'll incorporate whatever that footwork is that that coach wants them to do. And the other, on top of that too, is just making sure they understand what their coaches are teaching them. And if there's things that they need to work on, I'll have them relay that to me and we'll work on that on the weekends. Longtime pupil and former Chandler Wolves quarterback Mason Moran has benefited greatly from his time in the lab as he has now moved on to Oregon State University. But he's not the only one seeing results on the field. I always think of the off season as not necessarily being off, it's just away from school. So it's just not you're on campus, you're just back at home, you know, still putting in the work. And like you said, I've been with Manucci for a while since I believe it's eighth grade. So it's been, you know, some years now, but he's taught me many, many things and um, definitely prepared me for the next level. One of the great pastimes on Friday Night Football in America is the marching bands. The gridiron action is awesome, but the marching band makes sure that the fans are rocking and at halftime is game time. Under the glaring Arizona sun, the Highland Hawk Marching Band, one of the top bands in the state, goes through the paces as another Friday night performance approaches. Marching bands across the state and the country have long provided the backdrop to the excitement and pageantry of Friday night football. However, these days, as with everything else, marching band has gone to another level. Long gone are the straight lines and regimented John Philip Sousa marching routines. Today, band members are asked to commit to long hours and extreme conditions in order to put a great product on the field, which they believe is comparable to a well-trained athlete. We're out here in the sun for three hours after every day of school and out here for about eight on Saturday. So yeah, I'd say it's about equivalent to a sport. And just like any sport, preparations for rehearsal must be made by marking the fields for practice, as well as assembling and tuning the tubas. But most importantly is learning how to perform the field show, which is equivalent to learning the playbook in football where everyone has an individual role that must be executed to perfection. It's pretty tough. Um, when we get drill, we're given each, everyone's assigned a number and um, so we're, if we say go find set 15, um, you're given uh, two axes, um, say like you're on the 35 yard line and you're on the front hash and then you have the people around you so you, you find your form. Friday nights are all about finding the perfect form as it is all business once you step off the line. This year's show is entitled Tradition, and Highland has plenty of it, as band director Kevin Bennett explains the fulfillment of seeing the finished product. When the kids come off the field knowing that they've accomplished so much over the season, all the weeks and weeks of hard work and the heat and the wind and the, sometimes the rain even, we put all that work together and seeing them come off the field and knowing that, man, we have a great show and this excitement and the, just the joy in their face all the time when they come off the field is pretty neat to see. This year especially, the Highland football team has been killing it and it's made football games so much fun. Um, when we come off the field and everybody's cheering, it's really cool because it's not like we love our parents and we love the other school's parents and they're so supportive and they're the reason we can do what we do. But seeing our friends and our peers like see what we do out here, it's not like we're the band geeks. It's like, oh yeah, there's the marching band coming off the field. Wait a minute, did she just say band geek? Because band geek is chic and long live the drum line. Oh, yeah.